Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's pick a card reading, I thought we'd look at what's coming next in your connection. What kind of big change is coming next in your connection? Um, I am having problems uploading some of my personals. It's been taking like hours, days to upload them. So I'm working on them as fast as I can. I plan on finishing my readings by Tuesday. Um, I'm sending some out today. Um, today, guys, I went to a crystal store while I was away, which was absolutely amazing. Let me move these over so they're center under the turtle. <laughs> and I bought all these crystals, and I thought I'd, well, these ones, and I thought I'd use them today. But look, I also bought myself this little turtle. Isn't he cute? So turtles could be relevant for someone. Turtles are a relevant thing for me. And when I saw him, I was just like, I have to have that turtle. Isn't he cute? Anyway, so he's going to be the mascot today. Um, isn't he cute? Anyway. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, I don't know the name of this stone. I should have taken a card um, because it's coming up as Amazonite. Amazonite? I'm not sure how to pronounce Amazonite. Am it just doesn't sound natural to me. Amazonite? Amazon night? I don't know. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I plan on going back to that crystal store before I go, and go home and figure out what it is. Because it is a very beautiful stone. Um, it's very light. It almost doesn't feel real. So I need to go back and figure out what it's called. But anyway. Pa oh, that could be relevant. It It's so light that it almost doesn't feel real. Maybe there's something about pile three. There's something in your life that's like too good to be true or something. I don't know. Anyway. Um, so for pile number one, we have this pink calcite, which I've never seen pink calcite. But I was, um, when I read the properties of it, I was like, that is a stone I need. Very calming, healing, self-love kind of energy. For pile number two, we have this piece of blue appetite. It called to me from across the store. I saw it. I was like, ooh, I need that. <laughs> and then for pile number three, we have the mystery stone, which is masking as Amazonite. Amazonite? Anyway, however you say it. But look, that is not Amazonite. Um, anyway, I'm going to go back to that store and get the name of it. But yeah, that's pile three, the unnamed stone. <laughs> and it's so light. It feels almost not real. Anyway, if you need a minute to sit with the energy, go ahead and take your time and I will see you at your pile. Hello, pile one. So you're, or if you chose, <laughs> if you chose blah, blah, pink calcite, this is going to be your reading all about what's coming next in your connection or what big change is coming next. So let's put this by the turtle. It's a boy. I haven't named him yet. <laughs> Everything to me is a boy. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Oh, look, we have to push everything down now. There we go. All right, so yeah, let's see what your card is. We have round and round. So what I see next, big changes coming for your connection or what's coming next for your connection is, you know, I feel like you and your person may finally be able to overcome some kind of cycle here and move forward finally. Um, it could be that you and your person were stuck in this very never-ending story, um, repetitive cycles, repetitive fights, on again, off again, on again, off again. We were on a break, you know, that kind of stuff. And I feel like we're seeing, there's been some kind of spiritual awakening here. We do see that spiral right in front of her third eye. So I do feel like there's been some kind of awakening or some kind of change that has finally broken the cycle, however that resonates to you. And that this connection is finally ready to move forward. Like I said, in the past, you guys could have been on like a merry-go-round and, you know, every time you got off, you thought, what was like, what was I thinking doing that again? Like, I can't believe I'm here again. And then what do you do? You get back on the merry-go-round. <laughs> We're all guilty of it. It's okay. So yeah, you have some kind of cycle closing out here. That's what's coming next for you. So let's see, let's get some tarot cards about you and your person. And then we'll get a few more Oracle cards. This person could be watching you right now. But let's just get an idea of what's coming next for you and your person. So what's next in this connection? What, Ooh, 10 of cups. 
Ten of Cups. What's next in this connection? So you and your person could even be, look, we have Temperance, Ten of Cups. So you guys could already be, you know, more balanced with each other, already working through a cycle, maybe in union or partial union, you know, finally moving forward. Or you're about to be. Whoops. Get under there. <laughs> All right, so for some of you, I'm feeling like you could have an apology coming in soon because I see the page of uh, the page of swords on the bottom. Sorry, the page of cups on the bottom. So for some of you, this person could be coming in with an apology or they've already apologized. Sorry about that. I'm just, you know, straightening my crystals the way that I do. Stop, 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 stop. There we go. Perfect. Yay. All right, so Spirit, let's see. Let's look at the current situation. So what is the current situation between these two? Page of Cups. So we do have the energy of someone needing to apologize or someone that's going to come in and apologize. Um, this could be an apology that you've been waiting a long time for that you thought you might never get. Um, we're just gonna tuck this guy right under there. Um, Finding Nemo could be important because I'm hearing like the turtle in the EAC East Australian current. I got it right this time, I think. <laughs> so current energy, we do have the Page of Cups. So this person in the past, this is water energy, could have acted in a way that, you know, they could have been repeating a cycle and finally you had enough and said, you know what, that's enough of that crap. Um, I'm done with that. I'm going to Queen of Swords you and your butt. <laughs> you know, that's what we have to do if we're stuck in a cycle, a cycle that's like never ending and hurting us and bringing our energy down, causing us anxiety or we're not getting what we deserve, we really do need to embody Queen of Swords energy, Aries. So no, nope, that's that's not that's not air energy. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And we need to stand in our authentic power, or, or sorry, our power and our authentic truth and cut contact or cut the cycle because otherwise it just keeps going. You can never get off the ride. So I do feel like in the past, you did this and that's what's making, that's what's broken the cycle. Now this person, you know, is coming back in with some kind of an apology, some kind of small offer here. Let's see if we can still see it all the way down there. I don't even think we'll need that much room. All right, so let's see how they're feeling about the connection. So what are their thoughts and feelings about this connection? So we have a lot of cards coming out for your person. Look at this. This is how they're seeing this connection. They are ready to move forward with you. They are ready. If they haven't come towards you, they're ready to come towards you. They're packing their boat and they're on their way. Um, they want to feel your light again. I feel like they could have gone through a dark time, possibly after you cut them off. And now we see them coming out of the darkness, wanting to move forward, wanting to make amends. This is about reconnecting after disconnect. And that's the energy your person is in. They're in the energy of forward movement. So if you haven't heard from them, you're about to. Um, for some of you, you could have just heard from them or you could be in the process of moving forward already with this person. We do see some kind of spark here spiritually. So there has been some kind of change, some kind of awakening. I do feel like this person, you know what? I just said we didn't need all that room because I wasn't getting that many cards. And then four cards came out for one question. All right, spirit, there you go. Um, so this card can represent, this is fire energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We have Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. No, this is fire. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Why do I keep mixing up air and fire today? I've done it like through all of my readings. It's very strange. I've never had that happen before. Fire energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. This can also represent someone who's had a bit of a spiritual awakening, especially about this connection. And you guys have a new spiritual start in this connection, one without that cycle. This can represent someone who's thinking about you very intensely in a sexual way. So that's the energy they're in. 
your person could be feeling at a distance from you right now, or you could be at a distance from this person with the world, but they do see this as a faded connection. They see you as a little mermaid part of their world. Um, you know, I, I'm not gonna sing it. Um, they're also looking at this like they finally broke some kind of cycle here. So it's very interesting that this came out under their energy. So they're, they feel like they've broken it or they're ready to come to you and break the cycle of maybe not taking accountability because we do have an apology coming in. Um, this person is ready to prioritize you. They could have juggled you in the past. They could have prioritized other people or other situations over you. And, you know, they've had an awakening about that cycle and they've broken it. And that's the energy they're in right now. They're breaking the cycle. And, you know, I feel like if they haven't already, they they are going to be coming towards you um, because they want you in their future. It's why they broke the cycle. Look, we have the Six of Wands on the bottom. So this person wants success with you. They want recognition. Um, they could want, you know, the whole world to know that your boyfriend and girlfriend or girlfriend and girlfriend or boyfriend and boyfriend or partner and partner. Um, I love everyone. <laughs> yeah, this is um, very nice energy. This person could be watching you online. So Spirit, what is the viewer's energy towards this connection? What is the viewer's energy towards this connection? We have the chariot and the six of cups. So you feel drawn to this person. You could ha you could resonate with soulmate, twin flame, um, past life connection. It doesn't matter if, you know, this is, you're looking at this person as someone from your past. So it could be, you know, it could be past, um, past life. Um, but you, you're in a very nostalgic place. Um, this could also be, you know, you trying to heal your inner child, but your energy about this connection is you feel the bond, you feel the deepness of this bond, you feel that, you know, you probably had previous lives together, you have a history together, and you want forward movement with this person. I believe you want reconciliation here. That is your energy whether or not you haven't heard from this person or you're already moving forward with this person, this is what you want. You want union. You want forward movement with this person. You don't want to go forward alone. You want, you know, you've been waiting for this cycle to break so that you can both move forward together, balanced. All right, let's see what is helping or harming this connection. What is helping? We're harming this connection. Oh, I just want to... Uh, I'm going to take all of these. Ugh, I'm going to take them all. Um, so what is helping or harming this? Let's talk about helping first, and then we'll talk about harming. Because these all have light and shadow attributes, these cards, as do we. We all have light and shadow. Um, so what's helping this connection right now? For those of you that are together... I feel like, or about to be together, there's an energy of you really working well as a team together, possibly after this cycle is broken. Again, we're looking at what's helping. So, you know, you're both giving to this situation. You're both nurturing this situation. You're both trying to ground this connection. Um, you could be meeting, you know, halfway. Uh, there could be a lot of communication happening that's helping this connection or a lot of forward movement that, you know, Maybe forward movement gives you confidence within this connection that this person still wants this, or perhaps it's them that needs the confidence. Um, messaging is huge here. You guys could be, you know, really good at communicating. Even if you're at a distance, you could be really good at communicating through messenger, through text. Maybe you call each other a bunch. Maybe, you know, you do the cute thing where you say goodnight and fall asleep on the iPad. Um, for what's helping it, I believe that you did have to walk away from this person and that has what has awoken them to this connection. Um, this is very fast moving energy. You have a lot of fast moving energy in this reading. So if you haven't heard from your person yet, I believe you will. Um, that's kind of what these cards are saying. Now for what's harming this connection, we'll just, you know, 
that's what's helping it. And that could be how this person is acting now. Um, what's harming it, harming it, harmony, <laughs> what's harming it is, you know, as a blockage, this card talks about not meeting each other halfway. Mm -hmm. So for some of you, you could be in the energy where you're butting heads or you feel like you're giving more than them and it's making you feel resentful. Um, there could be, you know, I have a low battery. I'm going to have to charge after pile one. Um, there could be, you know, low communication right now that's hindering this. You could be, maybe you're keeping your back turned a little on this person. Maybe you're, you know, not communicating as much. Maybe you don't trust them because of whatever that cycle was. And like Eight of Cups, um, for harming it, you could be, you know, you could be walking away from this connection or you could have already walked away from this person. And I'm not here to judge or anything. If you, I always say to people, listen to your intuition and do what is important to you. We have the hermit. So you guys for, you know, helping this connection, I do feel like you and your person have done a lot of inner reflection about this, a lot of reflecting about this cycle, a lot of reflecting about how much you both mean to each other. So spirit, what's coming next in this connection? We'll get two cards. What's coming next in this connection? Oh, the judgment card wanted to come out. So we do have the emperor. So, you know, there is there is the energy of taking control here. Somebody's going to take control. Somebody's going to take action. Um, this is divine masculine energy. This is Aries. So, you know, I do see you and this person moving forward. I do see this person could have had to break the cycle before they entered divine masculine energy. Um, but I think that you're both taking action towards this connection in the near future here. Oh my gosh, we have the lovers. So you're going to have some kind of choice to make. So again, if you haven't heard from this person, this person could come in and ask you to forgive them. And that's your choice. Ask you to be with them again. Um, that's amazing. That's Gemini energy. And you see how they just pull on each other's energy. This is definitely a soul connection, whether or not you resonate with twin flames, soulmate, or you just really care about this person. It really doesn't matter. A connection is a connection. And we have the star on the bottom, which represents healing. It represents release. Um, it could be that this person was in their ego and they were wearing a mask and telling you that they didn't care about you, that they didn't want a future with you. And they were, you know, they weren't being honest. They were definitely not being honest here. Um, this is also the energy of, you know, you guys finding your way back to each other, not giving up hope, never letting go of each other. Every time I say never letting go, I hear that Titanic scene where she's like, I'll never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. Oh, so sad. And then she lets him go and puts him in the water. Ugh. Anyway, that's some sad stuff right there. So. I want to get you some more oracle cards about what's coming next so that we can get you some advice. So let's see here. Oh, there's an ant on my hotel wall. Very interesting. Hello, ant. <laughs> He's alone. He's alone, ant. So spirit, let's get another card for what's coming next in this connection or what big changes are coming. Woo! Gratitude wants to come out. So I feel like this is lover's energy six again. So there's a lot about union. I believe that union is coming next for you guys. You could already be in partial union. Um, this also talks about, you know, realizing after you make it through the cycle, after you make it back together, realizing all the things you missed about each other, all the things about each other that you're so grateful for, the energy that you're grateful to be back around very beautiful. So there is something about showing thanks towards each other, um, appreciating your blessings, appreciating, appreciating being brought back together. And with this image here, I do get this. Um, <clears throat> we see the shining light. So I feel like 
with this earth animal here, a earth animal, oh my gosh, you know what I mean, this this creature with horns that lives in the woods. I am getting earth energy. I know that most animals are earth animals. <laughs> it's not like that's an alien animal. <laughs> but um, I do feel this connection grounding and that, you know, I feel like you guys have been guided back to each other um, or this person has been guided back to you over time. What else, spirit? We have stability. So I was just talking about this um, situation grounding. And we do see you having stability here. Um, what's really interesting is this does equal five, so change. Oh my gosh, we have five, six, seven. That's a sign that this is moving forward, that you're on a right path. Five, six, seven. Um, more earth energy. So again, this is being grounded. This connection is being grounded. I believe after this person went through these transformations. We also have these two beautiful swans here and you guys know swans represent soulmates and twin flames. Soul spark. So we have these beautiful divine creatures here. So if you resonate with twin flames, you know, we see this connection. We see this person coming back more stable this time. Again, emperor energy, more stable, more... Um, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> All right, spirit, let's get a moon card. What advice does Pile want me to hear? We have you and your loved ones are safe, new moon and cancer. So, you know, this, this connection, especially if it's a divine connection, is protected by, you know, the universe, your spirit guides, whatever you believe in, whatever your higher power is. Get another one, spirit. A fiery climax approaches. Full moon in Aries. And that's what we saw. That emperor coming in. Aries energy. That hot fire energy. Getting what that masculine wants. <laughs> which is his feminine. Gender doesn't matter. I don't care. <laughs> I love all genders. I support all genders. We do have on the bottom of the deck, conclusions are within reach. So you do have answers coming to you here. Um, let's see what this deck has to say about what changes are coming in. Spirit, what changes are coming in for pile number one and this connection? What kind of advice do we need to give? Delight wanted to come out. I should have taken it. But it kind of flipped back in, so I didn't. We have truth. So you could be receiving the truth. You could be receiving an apology, a confession of some sort, or you could realize, you know, maybe you've let go of this person and when they come in for forgiveness, you realize that, you know, you haven't actually let go of them, that you still love them, that you still care about them. And, you know, you have to be honest with yourself about that. Oh my gosh, we have voyage. So for some of you, this can symbolize, you know, it is a mother and a baby whale. So it could symbolize, you know, starting a family. It can also symbolize taking a trip. It is voyage. So you could, you know, take a trip to see this person or they could travel to see you or you could travel together. You could be at a distance from this person. This also represents to me, you know, feminine energy because we see this motherly energy similar to the Empress with the baby, protecting the baby underneath this beautiful moon and it is very much like this could be symbolic of your journey as a divine feminine i just saw 2112 on the timer so confirmation for my twin flames um as i was talking about divine feminine we saw mirrored numbers that's huge confirmation and you know what we'll take that truth card too and look we have thriving so I believe after, you know, after you both choose this, after this person comes back and apologizes, after you start moving forward, that this connection really will thrive after this cycle has finally been broken. Very beautiful energy. Let's see. Let's get one of these. Spirit, 
what does pile one need to know about this connection moving forward what big changes are coming what kind of advice do you have about this connection let's see hmm look at this we have storm warning and contract and on the back we have door to personal healing and happiness so we do see justice here we see some kind of tower moment um they're you know karma had to play a factor here in this connection um there had to have been some kind of tower moment some kind of chaos to wake this person up because we do have 10 the wheel of fortune energy and you know this also goes to show that this is a destined connection we have six contract so i get huge justice vibes from this card libra gemini aquarius no just libra <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me today. Um, and I believe that what we're seeing is this is about to come into balance. That you guys, it's all over your cards that you have a soul contract with this person. And that this soul contract is trying to ground. And that's possibly why there was this, you know, this storm that happened between the two of you. So that that person would wake up. Hmm. Hmm, do we want to get one more from this deck? Let's get one more. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Four of Wands, happily ever after, happy family. Um, your person could already have children or you could have children. This is, you know, union, transformation. Oh my goodness. And yeah, we also had the door to personal happiness, which I wanted to talk about because... Um, this card is very much about, you know, the universe opening these doors that you've been waiting, like you've been waiting for this, you've been waiting to see growth, you've been waiting to see this person transform and spirits saying it's here, it's time. Um, union, we have the peacock, so divinely protected, divinely guided, we have butterflies for transformation. With the growth around this, I believe some time has passed between you and this person. But we see these doors open now. Um, light at the end of the tunnel, I'm hearing. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And rainbows are, you know, they remind me of miracles. Um, it's so, it's always so amazing when you see a rainbow. It's always so magical. <clears throat> the peacock, I'm not sure if I already said it, represents being divinely guided. Um, seven chariot energy forward movement with this person so we see the doors opening for you and this person here in the near future so that's amazing um you know what i want to do i want to get you one animal card just to kind of end it off i hope i have enough battery on my phone for this so spirit i want to see what's coming next for pile one for their energy what will be the, the energy they're embodying here in the near future with this person let's see Ooh, cosmic egg. Ooh, that's magical. All right, so Spirit, what kind of energy is Pile 1 going to be embodying? Golden egg, yes. Okay. So the golden egg, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory could be uh, relevant here. Let's get the animal book. The golden egg is one of the spiritual cards. So I do feel like after this person comes back, after you hear from them, after you forgive them, or as you're moving on, um, you will, you know, have this spiritual growth. With the golden egg lives a precious soul. Deep within that soul resides a message. The sound cannot be heard nor the message discerned until we retreat from the noise of everyday modern life. The magical essence of the golden egg needs warmth, quiet, and time to unfold. No rushing, pushing, or grasping. Find a place of deep and restful ease, perhaps yoga or meditation. When the time begins to settle and the breath is calm, ask the question that weighs heaviest on your heart, staying open to any response you hear. Engaging with the energy of the golden egg is an advanced practice. It requires becoming intimate with our very essence and comfortable with vulner vulnerability. When a feeling of tenderness or gratitude arises from deep within you, know that you are well on your way. Your chest might swell like you were seeing an old friend that's been away for a long, long time. Listen to the message they've wanting that they've, they've been wanting to tell you. 
That's beautiful. So we do see transformation here. It could be that, you know, when this person finally comes back in, that their apology, that seeing the cycle changing, seeing growth helps you embody this where, you know, you can forgive them and you do feel that joy swelling up inside of you when you're together. Anyway, I'm going to leave it here. I think that's a very nice way to end off the reading. Thank you again for joining me for another reading and I will be doing another one before I go home for sure. And I will be getting all those personals back to you. Don't worry. And as always, I am sending you lots of love and light, my friends. Bye. Hello, Pile 2, and welcome to your reading. If you chose the blue appetite, <laughs> it makes me hungry. <laughs> uh, and Pile 2, this is going to be your reading all about what change is coming next in your connection. So we'll put that there. So we're going to start with this card and then I'll get some tarot and then I'll get some more oracle. I took a little break. Um, I took a little break, so I'm just trying to get back into the energy here. And I'm not sure if I said it in my intro, but I have this new turtle that I got at a crystal store that I absolutely love and I'm glad he's here. So pile to the next big change or what's coming next in your connection. We have higher power, so we have some kind of awakening happen happening, whether it's you, whether it's your person, whether it's the two of you together, there's some kind of elevation happening here within this connection. This must be a very telepathic connection with that. You know, we see that third eye, we see, it looks like a flashlight. Oh my goodness. So somebody's seen the light I'm hearing. Somebody's seen the light or you can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. But we're going to get some tarot and see what this is about. So it's not going to be, you know, a super long reading. But yeah, I just wanted to spend some time with my favorite people. Um, we have seven of pentacles on the bottom. So that could be um, symbolic of something that you've been working on for a while or a connection that you've been putting your energy into for quite some time waiting to see the results. You've been, you know, nurturing it slowly. Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. So let's give them a shuffle. I hope you guys are well today. I'm happy to be here with you because you are my favorite people. <laughs> I'm not lying. I mean it. One Friday night, I did a personal for my new friend that I met through this channel. <laughs> and I was like, it's like hanging out with my friend. <laughs> Which, you know, I don't do on Friday nights. Listen, it's Saturday night and I'm sitting here doing a pick a card reading. <laughs> All right, so Spirit, we're looking at this connection. We're looking at what big change is coming next. So first, we're going to look at the current energy. We do have this higher power card, so there's some kind of elevation coming, some kind of enlightenment. Maybe you're leveling up your intuition. Oh, oh dear, oh my. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we have the Ten of Cups, Pile 2. <laughs> pile 2, are you with this person? Oh my goodness, if you're not with this person, you're going to be very soon. This is emotional fulfillment. Um, so you could really have awoken to how much this person means to you. You know, you could be in no contact and still, um, if there's some kind of awakening happening, and your person is awakening, you're both feeling this Ten of Cups energy, this, you know, that's what I want. That's my happy ending. That's my happy place. That's my emotional fulfillment. Wowza. That's uh, Cancer Scorpio Pisces there. We have Page of Cups on the bottom. So you could have an apology coming in. This could be a fresh start with someone. It could be a small offer from someone. Oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> oh now we have the sun. Divine Masculine Energy, Clarity, Happiest Card in the Deck, Pile 2. Who are you? <laughs> I'm really curious if you're with your person or not. It doesn't, I'm not actually looking at that right now, but that's so beautiful. So beautiful. You and this person could both have children and like blend families. Oh, all right. So 
I got so happy about that card. <laughs> All right, so let's look at their thoughts about this connection. So how do they feel about this connection? What are their thoughts? Oh my gosh. <gasps> Pile two. This is insane. This person is enlightened. Oh my goodness. Your person, you, there is enlightenment here. There, something big is about to happen or must have just happened because this is, this is beautiful energy. Oh my gosh. I feel so happy in this energy. Um, this could be a twin flame connection. We do have 1111. We do have the divine masculine popping up for a second time. The sun, Leo energy. This is Aries Leo Sagittarius. Um, this is very interesting. Your person has completely awoken to this connection. Uh, they realize you are what they want. You're their happily ever after. I'm not sure if they've communicated it to you, but they are being drawn to your energy like a moth to a flame. Oh my goodness. They are, they are on it pile too. <laughs> anyway, um, this is very beautiful, loving energy. Um, this person definitely sees you as the light in their life. You could be twin flames. Um, this person could really be in their divine masculine energy right now. They could have, you know, they could have solved some kind of cycle or pattern within themselves, or you guys could have solved or made it through a cycle together and broken that cycle. Um, and now there's, you know, all this loving energy, look, forward movement. They want to move forward with you. They want a future with you. New beginning. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hmm. All right, let's see how you feel about them or this connection. How do you feel about this connection? Interesting. You, oh, this one. You you still see the potential with this person. This is Earth energy towards Virgo Capricorn. We have the Two of Cups. You still see the potential with this person. You see the potential of growth. I really do feel like your person has leveled up. They've you know they've gone through some type of test and passed or something, or some type of cycle was broken, and it's like now you can see the potential in this person. You can see that they're trying. You can see that they're trying to offer you more stability they're putting in more effort oh they could be younger than you this is a page um this is very beautiful you still have feelings for this person an ace of wands on the bottom you know it does confirm that there's some kind of spiritual rebirth between the two of you um some kind of awakening has happened something that needed to happen and now this energy can move forward I feel like you guys have a very intense uh, attraction to each other, like magnets. You're probably like very um, sexually. Um, <laughs> I just have to laugh at myself for how awkward I am. I feel like you guys turn each other on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Look, you see, you see the potential. Cancer energy. You see the potential here. Oh my goodness, there's something about balance and moving forward here. It's just absolutely beautiful. I'm really getting like divine feminine, divine masculine energy, like moving forward. Very interesting. Guys, funny story, the hotel that I'm staying at last night, there was a car crash outside last night in the parking lot and I felt it. And then this morning I went for a walk and there was debris everywhere. There could have been a tower moment in your person's life. Let's see what's helping or hindering this connection. And I'll explain both ways of the card. How it's helping or how it may be hindering. What's helping or hindering? HH could be relevant. <laughs> what's helping or hindering? <clears throat> we have the Six of Pentacles. Okay. So what's helping this connection is I believe that in the past, you guys didn't have reciprocal energy especially if you're divine feminine and divine masculine. 
I was saying that I saw balance, so something was definitely out of balance. You could have given more to this connection. Um, we have Earth energy, we have air, so Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, what's helping this connection is I do believe your person has had a breakthrough about how they can give to this connection, how they can give more to this connection. There are aces all over this reading, so new beginning, new beginning, new beginning. Um, I really do feel like your person has had clarity about the fact that they may have not been giving their all in the past or giving you what you deserve. Um, for what's hindering it, there might still be a little bit of an imbalance and, you know, you could still feel like you're communicating more, that you're giving more and spirits saying that, you know, you need to be patient with this person. They really are trying. They really are trying. I see them trying. Um, they want this equal give and take here. Your person could have self-sabotaged this connection. Look, there was definitely sabotage here, possible mind games, um, broken heart, hurt in the past. But this person, you know, I do really do feel they're coming in elevated. It's beautiful. I mean, I'm a little jealous. This is beautiful energy. <laughs> Whose masculine is this? Maybe it's a feminine. I don't know. Um, gender doesn't matter. All right, let's see what's coming next between these two. I can only imagine. What's coming next? Perseverance. This is beautiful. Okay, so what we have coming next, we have the seven of wands, so more fire. You know, that's, I just looked at the timer at 11, 11. Um, this can be, you know, this is what's coming next. So you could, this is determination. This is not giving up. This is continuing to fight for this. So we see the both of you continuing to fight for this connection. You're both choosing this connection. You're both choosing to fight for it. If you haven't heard from your person, this can represent, you know, I feel like your person might unblock you or you may hear from them. We have, oh my gosh, look, we have, I didn't even know there was another card under that. We have the six of wands coming next. So we do have, you know, this wheel of destiny moving again and you and your person having success here. Uh, this can also represent, you know, making it known on social media that you're a couple. Um, this, I feel like everything in this connection really had to happen in divine timing, as frustrating as that can be when we're in the middle of it. Um, I tell you, when you get to the other side, you can look back and be thankful for all the lessons and be thankful for, you know, I was explaining about how sometimes a car in a personal, how sometimes a karmic is necessary to awaken the other counterpart. And I know that people don't like it when I say that, but I'm coming from a place where I'm healed and I can look back and see, I never would have been able to teach my counterpart that lesson because I wasn't, I wasn't that person. Uh, somebody needed to come in who was going to treat them the way my counterpart treated me. And that's exactly what happened. And does it suck? Yes. Do you have trust issues afterwards? Yes. Am I thankful for it? Yes. Because without it, who knows? Who knows what would be happening now? Anyway, we do have destiny. Um, the wheel of fortune turning. Karma being you know, righted or whatever the terminology is. I can't think of it right now. We also have healing on the bottom. So this is very beautiful energy coming out of, I feel like you guys are coming out of a period of rest and retreat within yourselves. Look, we have the high priestess. So you could be a spiritual or a light worker or want to be. I always say to people to explore that because I was, I get a lot of people saying like, I, you know, I like tarot, but I don't think I could actually do it. I don't think I could read for other people. Um, you know, there's so many great tarot readers out there. And I had all of those thoughts. I was like, I'm a small fish in a big pond and I am blown away by the support you guys have given me. So 
you know, if you follow your true calling, if you, if there's a little voice inside you whispering, I want to be a reader, I want to be a light worker, I want to be a writer, I want to be a singer, I want to be an actress, something, I want to be an influencer, something where you shine your light on people. Listen to that voice, okay? Because I put off, I ignored that voice until spirit was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to completely remove your counterpart and your current job so that you actually go for it. Anyway, somebody needed to hear that because you guys have, you guys have shown me I bring these things up for a reason. So I feel like somebody in this pile needed to hear that message. And I'm telling you, I don't find tarot very competitive, like, because I feel like if you want to be a reader, you'll find your people just like you guys found me. And I love you all. Look, we have death and rebirth under that. So not only a new beginning with this person, maybe a fresh start with what your spiritual mission is. Especially if you're a twin flame, you have a mission. You have a mission. All right, that was beautiful. You know what? That was, um, those were the cards I was taking, so. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, look. I feel like you could have had to stand in your Queen of Swords before to get this justice. Um, job well done, Spirit says. <laughs> it's like you, yeah, you followed the directions. You, you know, you did the Queen of Swords in. <laughs> and Spirit says, good job. That's why this is coming to balance. You know, it was all you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm sure your counterpart had something to do with it. But <laughs> uh, I'm giving you credit. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get some oracle cards to go along with this message. Okay, luck is on your side, new moon and Sagittarius. So I do believe that, you know, breaking the cycle, whatever this person, no, not this spiritual elevation, um, you know, spirits, I just feel like this is divinely guided and protected and I feel like Spirit's saying, you know, you're doing everything right. This person's doing everything right. And it, it's going to be okay. You guys are going to have success here. Luck is on your side. Spirit's on your side. I'm on your side. I'll be your biggest cheerleader. <laughs> Yay, love. <laughs> anyway, self-love too. I'm a cheerleader for self-love. I hated myself for 37 years of my life. 37 years of my life. I hated myself. And what a waste, you know? I should have loved myself a long time ago. We're much too hard on ourselves. Listen, step out of your comfort zone. I really do believe that some people in this pile want to be a light worker and are like, don't think they can do it. I'm telling you, follow your dream. Follow it. Do what your intuition is telling you to do. I think you're amazing. Amazing. Um, the answers you need are coming. So those that's for those of you in no contact who, you know, you're not sure if you'll hear from this person again. The energy is beautiful. Okay, let's get a couple of these cards. So Spirit, what can you tell me about this connection? What's coming? Focus. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, the mountains in this card do represent, you know, having obstacles with this person. I feel like you have been focused on this journey, especially if you're a counterpart. And you know, it could have been a long journey. I believe your person is just as focused now, especially with this higher power. I really do feel like they broke or they passed some kind of test. You know, you could have passed a test too. Um, you know, I feel like you're both focused on success with each other. You're both focused on compromise, on wanting to make things work. It could have been in the past that you were the one that was focused and this person just didn't seem to care, but we see that energy changing here. Oh my gosh, look, Gateway. <gasps> I'm telling you, something's happened here. Something's been released. Um, Spirit is opening the door to this. These waterfalls in the back represent release, um, releasing past patterns, releasing doubts, releasing fears. Um, the shining light represents 
you know, listening to your intuition, spirit guiding the two of you back together. And I mean, this is just very symbolic to an awakening. We have this magical creature going through this gateway. It's beautiful. Forgiveness. Oh, I feel like you guys want to forgive each other. I may have brought up the Karmic, the third party, for a reason. There may be someone in this pile, because it is a general reading, that is still, you know, <clears throat> holding on to resentment. And, you know, part of the feminine's journey is to let go of resentment and to have unconditional love and forgiveness. As hard as it is. Oh my gosh, look, we have change. And, you know, this reminds me of the chariot. Um, this is beautiful energy. I just feel like there's huge things happening spiritually for you and your person that's allowing union um, if you're not already in union. it's It really is beautiful. Oh my gosh, we have the happiness card seven, chariot energy. <gasps> we have a unicorn. The synchronicities in this reading, guys, I can't make this up. Like, this is beautiful. I'm going to read you that card. I'm sorry for the noise. The city is loud. This card <clears throat> is a sign of delight. Celebrate and have fun. Embrace life and others. Embrace life yourself and others. I was saying self-love. Say yes today, soar to the clouds and let your doubts dissolve. All is well, it's simple. Your purpose in life is to experience happiness. That's all that's required of you as a soul. You do not need to be unhappy to please another. Whatever your circumstances, there's always something that can bring you delight. And what you put your attention on will grow. When you focus, 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 focus. <laughs> I love synchronicities. They make me so happy. <laughs> when you focus on the areas of your life that bring you happiness, these areas will prosper. One of the fastest paths to true pleasure is through sharing and giving. So give of your heart and share your love, but don't overgive. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> happiness spreads to others like wildfire and can help heal the world. Dance and sing with abandon, joy is your spiritual birthright. Affirm, happiness and ecstasy flow through me wildly and freely. The spirit of the bluebird says, all is well, say yes to life and let your doubts dissolve. I said, release of doubts. Don't wait until the future, live life fully now. You do not need to struggle or suffer to grow. You can grow leaps and bounds amid joy. So guys, for a lot of you, I'm getting that it's time for you and this person to be back together. It's, you know, you've done your journey, they've done theirs. It might not be perfect, but you know, you're you're in the energy where spirit's about to two, 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 two on the timer, two, 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 two on the timer. Um, spirit's saying, you know, you guys have done enough here to come back together and hopefully he'll keep mo moving forward together expansion yes and this is you know 10 or 37 reduces to 10 wheel of fortune energy love it love 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 it pile two i want to be you <laughs> vitality health success abundance healing and passion are expanding in your life however you can't sit back and wait for it to happen the energy of summer is the energy of working with passion in the direction of your dreams. Give it everything you've got and immense reward will follow. Do not sit on the sidelines. Work hard, play hard, your labor will pay off. If you hold back and repress what you feel during this time, you will become drained and your spirit will wane. This is not the time to take care of everyone else. This is the time to step forward with passion and delight. You'll be glad you did. Work with passion, don't hold back. Take positive steps in the direction of your dreams now in order to reap the harvest later. Your hard work will result in abundance, bounty, and beauty. Celebrate, enjoy the fruits of your labor. Aww. And it's on page 109, which equals 10. So we have 10, 10, I'm telling you, somebody passed a test. 
Oh, look at what's on the bottom of the card. We have purity, unicorn. That's nine and nines are about evolution of self. So like I said, I believe you both have evolved. Oh my gosh, look, you've both evolved enough to be together. <laughs> look, you're meeting each other. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I bet you I lost some people there. <laughs> I bet you those negative people are like, okay, that's enough for me. <laughs> that's enough sunshine for me. <laughs> you know, my name means like light and sunshine and like bright headed. <laughs> and I have like reddish <laughs> bright hair. What do we have? We have a heart awakening. Mm hmm. And it equals 11. I'm telling you, the energy in this pile is so full of love and. <gasps> okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> what? This equals 11. We have a heart awakening. I'm telling you. There's a blockage that's been cleared between you and your person. And we have yin yang. The balancing of divine and feminine mass, or sorry, the balancing of divine masculine and divine feminine energy. Oh my goodness. Twin flames. Hello. <laughs> if you resonate with twin flames, hello. <laughs> All right. To end it, I wanted to get one of these animal cards to see what your energy is about to be or is. Just to end it off. <gasps> uh, I have to take that. I have to take that. There's been so many synchronicities about unicorns. I bought, I bought a unicorn today. Hang on. I bought this today. I went to a crystal store. I was called to it for my daughter. That's not a coincidence. Um, he's going to stay right there because all of my animals are boys. <laughs> That's not a coincidence. This is the card I'm taking for you. I don't believe in coincidences. <laughs> Co <-winky> dinks. <laughs> uh, it's such a spiritual card. Reconnecting to higher wisdom or divinity. Oh my goodness. It's difficult to see, hear, or think of a unicorn without immediately questioning if it's real. Did they ever exist, perhaps long, long ago? The mind answers maybe, or it could be, or no way. This very contemplation it explains our relationship with divinity and encapsulates our wavering belief in the unicorn. We wonder what divinity is. We wonder where our intuition comes from and if we can really trust it. We think about the higher power and our mind hesitates between yes, no, and maybe. Is it male or female? Does it have a name? Is it just a feeling? The unicorn card appears and wakes us up to the curiosity about the higher self and the divine. It is a card of questioning, exploring, and contemplating the inexplicable. The mind's eye knows there's something beyond our day-to-day -day lives, a deeper dimension to our experiences. The mind's eye reaches and reaches and reaches. The mind's eye, that's the card you got, reaches and reaches and reaches out to grasp, grasp something more. You are the unicorn and you have begun your quest for the answers. I have chills. Well, pile two. Now I have to go do pile three. <laughs> And like, what a tough act to follow. <clears throat> this is very divine feminine -y and divine masculine. It's amazing. And oh my gosh, what is going on? I was just having a conversation today with my counterpart about the movie, The Last Unicorn and how it has to do with tarot. That is just, that is strange. That is very strange. Anyway. Cool synchronicities pile too. I <clears throat> enjoyed that. <clears throat> Somebody could be contacting you because I have a closed throat now. But anyway, I'm going to go over to pile three now. <laughs> Thank you again for joining me for another reading. And I'm sending you lots of love and light. Lots. <laughs> Bye. 
Hello, Pile 3, and welcome to your reading. Um, this is very strange. I couldn't complete this pick-a-pile yesterday. I was having issues with my phone. So it felt really weird. I had to leave it at Pile 2, and then I went away, and I'm back almost 24 hours later. So this is a little strange for me. Anyway, <laughs> hello, Pile 3. <laughs> if you chose the mystery one, please someone tell me what this is. It is not Amazonite. It is not. I know it's not. I need to go back to that crystal store so I can figure out what it is because my apps are not working and I really like it. But anyway, if you chose this and pile three, this is going to be a reading about what big change or what's coming next for you and your person, depending on what situation or regardless of what situation you're in. Anyway, so I have some Oracle cards we're going to get on camera, but the first energy we're starting with is unfinished symphony so this is definitely about you know a connection that's not over um you may be in no contact thinking it's over you may be worried it's over getting this card symbolizes that this story is far from over you know it reminds me of the never-ending story so maybe the never-ending story is relevant um music could be very important between you and your person and you know, what's coming next is what's destined to happen. This is 10, so the Wheel of Fortune. So this is some kind of faded cycle that you guys, you know, it's a faded connection and there's a reason why it's unfinished. And you probably feel like it's unfinished. You probably don't have closure. Um, like I said, music could be very important in this connection. Um, for a lot of people in soul connections, no matter how you resonate, if you resonate with soulmate or twin flame, um, it is a way that our higher selves can communicate to each other. And so if you're listening to music and a line really stands out to you and it feels like it's from your person, it's because it is. Um, if there's a song, song you keep hearing on the radio or in a movie or a show, there's a reason for it. Listen to the lyrics. Um, I actually had a spiritual awakening through music. It was very, um, it was intense. <laughs> so destiny is what's coming next for you. Unfinished symphony. So, you know, right away I get the feeling that you're dealing with someone that you may have had a couple tries with and it never really amounted into anything or it never got into the commitment stage or maybe you were even married and went parted ways you know um we do have the queen of swords on the bottom so this could be symbolic of somebody cutting somebody off somebody standing in their authentic truth and you know walking away from a connection for justice that's a little bit of leftover energy from pile two but i feel like it's relevant here with this unfinished symphony I feel like maybe you had to walk away, but we'll see what the cards say. So I'll start shuffling. Oh my gosh, we have four of wands. So it could be a marriage. It could also be a twin thing. So guys, I went for a walk yesterday and I, I walked around my hotel. Um, I don't know why. And on my walk, I found a pin that was a black and white panda. It was so bizarre. I was like, I have to pick that up. Like on the ground, very strange. <laughs> you know how I love black and white animals. You know how I feel about pandas. Why did I walk down that street? I don't know. I'm not the type of person to, you know, I I'm, I'm a hermit. I don't like people. I don't like talking to people. I keep to myself. So why was I walking down the street? I have no idea to find that pin apparently. <laughs> But I'm telling you, that pin is going in my pin jar or my charm, my charm jar at home, and it's always going to be important to me. Um, let me find it. So these are both going in my charms. So this is the one I found on the road, this panda. I was like, that's so strange because I love pandas, you know, and 444 on the timer when I said that. And then when I told my counterpart, because I'm visiting my counterpart, when I told my counterpart that I found this panda, 
He said, that reminds me, I have a pin I want to give you. And it's a little, <laughs> it's a little black and white teddy bear. <laughs> anyway, these are going in my uh, charms at home. And this one will be extra lucky for twin flames. <laughs> well, they both will be. I know, I know, twin flame. <laughs> I love it. All right. So spirit, let's have a look at the current energy between them and their person. Current energy, let's see what's going on here. What is the heart of the matter here? What's happening right now? What is this unfinished business energy? Come on. <laughs> Ooh, we have hanged man. See, I feel like there's a stalemate going on between the two of you right now and perhaps you're in no contact um perhaps you know neither of you were willing to budge um this is also an energy of listening to your intuition so we do have hanged man mode so right now you know your person's holding back i feel like both of you are in this mode of reflection trying to see things from a different way um right away i see the ten of pentacles wanting to peek out at me um you know, I feel like that's 1010. I feel like you and this person saw 10 of Pentacles with each other and, you know, something happened to come between you here. Something happened to cause this stale, stagnant energy. And, you know, I often talk about how when we're in this stagnant energy, two of swords, spirit kind of throws a tower in our way to break things up. So it's possible you guys had a tower moment um, but right now, you know, you're both trying to listen to your intuition. Um, I'm getting divine feminine with that, just with that moon. Um, that's air, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And this is about seeing things differently. So I do feel like because you walked away from this person or because there was this tower moment where you went your separate ways and the energy became stagnant and you're at a crossroad or a stalemate, um, it's caused this person to be able to reflect here. And we'll see how they're feeling. We'll get into it. I want to make sure I have room for all the cards. There we go. Do you guys like my new turtle? <laughs> I love my turtle. <laughs> all right, so let's look at your person's energy right now. What is your person's energy right now? That is too many. Oh, I'm going to take that though. Oh my. Well, no. Yeah, I have to take. Mm. Look at this, you guys. <laughs> I said I wasn't going to take it. And then Spirit was like, you might want to flip those cards over. <laughs> and then I looked at the back of the deck and I'm seeing Judgment and Eight of Swords. So right away I'm seeing that you guys are probably at a distance or this person's holding back with that four of pentacles we'll talk about it in a minute um yeah so we do see that your person's holding back um they could be going through financial restraints right now i really feel like this is one of those situations where your person you know didn't pick you or mistreated you and now they're getting their karmic justice that's what it feels like to me and that's what i was kind of sensing with the tower and the stagnant energy and the queen of swords and then all these cards popped out um, so we do have this person holding back. They could be suffering financially because if it's a counterpart connection and they chose wrong, spirit will slowly start to take away their finances. I am living, breathing. I had it happen to me. It's a real thing. <laughs> um, this is also an energy of, you know, not letting go of your energy. They're still holding on just like you're holding on. You're here, you know, listening to a tarot reading about them. Um, they could be listening to tarot readings. I just heard. Or they could be trying to understand why they feel so connected to you on a soul level. Maybe they're not spiritual. <clears throat> anyway, we have some earth energy there, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. These were the cards that I wasn't going to take. And Spirit was like, no, you want to take them. We have the tower. So that, you know, that does confirm what I was saying, that something needed to happen here to wake your person up. And that's what we see happening. It could be that it was you that needed to be woken up, but most of the time it's the masculine if you resonate with divine counterparts. Um, we do see this person 
because of this tower moment, they're trying to move forward. Um, you could have been dealing with a knight of wands. So this person could have been very hot and cold, very in and out, could have been a player, could have chosen somebody else over you. Um, you know, and that just led them back to you um, by running from this connection. Like I said, I feel like the universe was like, no, wait a minute, I'm going to I'm going to send you songs on the radio that remind you of that person. And I'm going to throw obstacles in your way and I'm going to, you know, throw you a karmic or two to teach you a lesson <laughs> because that's how it works. Um, and we see your person, you know, trying to move on from this Knight of Wands energy. Um, I truly believe they want to rebuild something here with you. But I do believe they're going through tower moments. You know, that's what I'm getting. Char Char Charmic? Oh my goodness. Charmic Gustus? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll just struggle that down anyway. Um, Karmic Justice is what I'm seeing. <laughs> uh, you know, a long, long time ago, I couldn't remember what this part of my hand was called and my friend and I started calling it the finger elbow. <laughs> uh, see, I make up funny words. I'm sorry. Anyway. So yeah, bottom of the deck, we do have eight of swords. So your person is overthinking and the card that was show peeking out was just uh, judgment. So they're definitely having their awakening. They're definitely having, you know, judgment day is here for them. And you know, it's meant to isolate them. It's meant to remove everything from their life that isn't working to clear their energy so that they can move towards you. Um, this person is overthinking about this. They're thinking about you a lot. They could feel very, oh my gosh, now we have counterparts showing themselves for the reading. King of Swords. So they are gaining clarity probably because they don't have access to your energy at this time. Take it as it resonates. Let's look at your energy. What is pile three's beautiful energy? <laughs> I'm not biased. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. So you are also, this is confirmation that the counterparts are here. Um, you are also looking at this with clarity. Maybe you've had some kind of awakening about this person. Maybe you've realized that they weren't actually trying to hurt you, that they were healing shadows. Um, you know, you could also be looking at this person as your counterpart, as your king of swords, if you are, you know, if you resonate with divine counterparts. Yeah, we have knight of pentacles on the bottom. So part of me believes that, you know, I feel like you're sitting, I know this is typically, you know, when we talk about the masculine, we talk about the king of swords and blah, blah, blah. But this is coming out as your energy. So I really do feel like you have clarity about who this person is, their purpose in your life. You could be in acceptance right now or just, you know, aware that your person is struggling and you're there for them energetically because you're, you know, you're calm, you're cool, you're collected, you're king of swords. And Knight of Pentacles, I feel like you do know that your person is going to be back. Again, I'm feeling this acceptance in your energy that you have clarity about this. You know this is going to come back around after this person, you know, slowly works their way back to you. This is a stable energy, Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. You could be watching this person online or they could be watching you. Take it as it resonates. I kind of want to get one more card for you. Um, can we get another card for pile threes? How they're feeling about this connection or their energy right now about this connection? You could be, you know, watching your person go through this online. <laughs> That's very interesting, the cards that kind of wanted to come out there but didn't. They told a story. <laughs> they told a story of... Oh, look at this. They told a story of um, needing to listen to your intuition, somebody self-sabotaging this connection. So if that sounds familiar. Um, so this is your energy. I feel like, you know, this can be about being afraid of being hurt again. I feel like, you know, I do feel like your person is going through some kind of awakening, some kind of judgment day. Um, and this can represent us 
like a new spark in a spiritual connection. So, you know, when one of you has an awakening, it can cause the spark in the energy. And, you know, even though you're sitting here with clarity, I'm feeling hugely for some of you that this person betrayed you and perhaps you are afraid of getting hurt again by this person. I feel like this is someone you have a lot of passion for, someone you're very attracted to, someone you feel a spiritual connection with. And there is this energy of being afraid that you're going to get hurt again, that this cycle is going to repeat again, no matter what that is, because not all counterparts or partners, if you don't resonate with soul connections at all, um, not all partners hurt us in the same ways, you know, it's different ways. So for some of you, you could be worried that this person had a karmic and it could be, you know, affecting your self-esteem. It could be affecting your confidence within this connection. Like, well, he had that or they had that other person. Um, what if they do that again? What if they, you know, this is also an energy of worrying about, you know, something sexual with the wands card because it's fire. So you could be worried that you're not enough for this person or that you're not attractive enough or that you're not sexy enough, which is just, you know, those are your fears. And I brought it up in one of the other piles. The karmics aren't there to make us feel bad about ourselves. The karmics are there to teach our person a lesson. And in the end, you know, once you heal from it, you can be thankful for that karmic. Um, I had to learn how to be thankful for that karmic situation because it, it did help my counterpart awaken. And I understand this feeling. I really get it. That fear of history repeating itself. I get it. And I'm sending you love. Lots and lots of love. <laughs> Okay, I touched the cards enough, I think. No, I need to move them a little more. <laughs> move over, move over. Thank you, somebody recognized that song. Thank you so much, I feel so validated. There was two in the bed and the little one said, roll over. <laughs> okay, I'm done. All right, so we do have Knight of Cups on the bottom. <clears throat> so you could, you know, you could be hoping that this person comes towards you um or this person could be coming towards you with this you know i feel like maybe they're coming forward with some kind of apology or emotional declaration towards you and you could be you know overthinking it worrying about it not trusting it and that could be in the near future you know all right so let's see what's helping or blocking this connection I did see the Five of Swords want to come out for your energy, so I do believe that you're worried about history repeating itself and being hurt. Um, so yeah, what's what's blocking, what's helping or hindering this connection? I'm gonna, I'll explain it both ways depending on the energy. What's helping or hindering this connection? We have the Chariot. Oh. Look, we have the sun wanting to come out with that, so I'm going to take it. So for some of you, there is a divine, the, it's the, you know, it's lack of clarity that's blocking this connection right now. It's not knowing where it's going, even if you're in low contact, not having any clarity about what you are, you know, you could be worrying, who am I to you? What am I to you? Are you going to commitment? Are you going to commit to me this time? Um, your person could also be in, you know, not in divine masculine energy. They could be still working on themselves. So that could be a blockage here with the sun. We have Leo. We have everybody here. Got, well, I don't see any water. Oh, no, we have we have the chariot. That's water. That's cancer energy. But we have lots of fire. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. We have Earth, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Lots of air, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, you know, I do feel like there's a lack of movement here that's blocking this connection or there's a lack of progress and that could be, you know, causing you, causing you a lot of anxiety here. But mm, breakthrough, 
we do have the Wheel of Fortune here, so I do believe that, you know, for what's harming it, definitely lack of clarity, lack of forward movement, possibly your person not learning their lesson yet, if you haven't heard from this person. If you have heard from this person, I do think, well, even if you haven't, the things that could be helping it right now, because I want to explain both, um, this bond that the two of you share with the sun energy, this is a bond that can't be explained. It's an energy that cannot be explained. So your person feeling this energy from you, feeling this light from you, um, that helps guide them towards healing. And I do see your person is healing right now. Um, also, what could be helping this is your determination to make this work, your determination to keep going, even when your masculine or counterpart or person, if you don't resonate with that, even when they seem like they're off here, you know, in no contact, you have this perseverance to keep going. It's like you trust in this connection, you trust where it's going, you trust that everything's happening in divine timing. And you in that mindset really does help this connection, I'm telling you. It really helps the energy when we learn to accept and not worry and not, like sometimes when we're in that waiting energy, like you know the energy I mean, you guys, you know whenever your phone buzzes, you're like, oh, maybe it's them. You know, you, you know exactly. Um, sometimes by being in that energy where we're so, like we're waiting for it to happen, it can prolong it. So my advice for you is to just like truly accept it and try and ignore the energy out of this person. I know it's hard though. <clears throat> I know it's very hard. <clears throat> Communication could be relevant. Um, let's see what's coming in next for these two. What's next in this connection? What is next in this connection? Yeah, we have, we do have somebody working on themselves here. So I believe that your person, oh yeah, that's the one I saw poking out. I'm taking it. Um, I'm taking it. I do believe that the next big change in your connection is that your person has had their judgment day and they've had their karmic justice or karmic retribution, whatever the words are. Um, what's coming next? We do see this person coming back towards you. Very stable, Page of Pentacles. I love to see the Page of Pentacles. He's the one that could possibly, you know, be getting help from other people. This is someone who's trying to do it properly. This is not, you know, Page of Wands, like a quick spark, like a quick passionate message and then out of there. This guy wants to put down roots. It doesn't matter what your gender. I accept all genders. I just seem to call everything a guy. I don't know. That's a guy. My, <laughs> that's a boy, my turtle. <laughs> um, you know, I was going to say I thought my zebra was a boy. You know, pile three, you're my soul family, so I am going to talk about it. <laughs> Pointless information for me. Um, I showed you this. My person gave me this zebra, and I'm convinced it's pregnant, and... So for me, I truly see this zebra as like a feminine empress, which is weird for me because most of my little creatures are boys. <laughs> uh, for more pointless information, tune in next week. I will be here. <laughs> anyway, we have this person coming in with stability, earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. This person wants to make an effort here. Um, this, is an, this is an offer that's going to put down roots. On the back of the deck, we have the Magician. So you do see the energy start to move here. That's what's coming next. Um, I feel like you both still see the potential in this connection. This can also symbolize, you know, you both working on yourselves. Um, your person could have been, they could have come across as manipulative in the past. And I just feel like saying this person is really trying. They're trying to work on themselves here with the magician energy. Um, they they do want union with you. They want a fresh start. And, you know, some of the things I think that you thought they were manipulating you could have just been shadows from childhood, could have been even, you know, I'm autistic. And um, I know that autistic people can come across, you know, 
cold sometimes and it's not that they are it's quite the opposite um anyway that's a whole other thing <laughs> but yeah we have forward movement we have communication we have incoming messages coming next one more card for what's coming next What's coming next for these two? Oh my gosh, look. Oh, that's magical. <laughs> that's just spiritually scrumptious. <laughs> this is balance. The balancing, you know, you've had patience, letting this grow, letting it, you know, this person evolve, you evolving. We have all this healing energy here. Um, the balancing of divine and feminine energies divine masculine and feminine energies it's beautiful and we have the high priestess so this next change could also increase your intuition it could increase your powers i bet you're magical and i said it in one of the other piles if you do believe in counterparts um, a lot of us are meant to be light workers and a lot of us fight that and i fought it for a very long time um until the universe took my other job away from me, basically. So I had no other choice but to take a leap of faith towards tarot. <clears throat> and guess what? It's the best decision I've ever made. And I feel like a lot of you maybe have that fear that you don't know enough or that you're not intuitive enough. And I'm telling you that you are. I'm telling you you're a high priestess and that you have potential. And that <clears throat> this journey, especially if you resonate with counterparts, the counterpart journey, you being on that counterpart journey, helps elevate your intuition, your knowledge about the cards, your your ability to read energy. You know, every time I went through a tower moment or a cycle with my person or a pattern was broken, I elevated and I could feel it when I would look at my cards. It was like they were telling me a story. Um, anyway, that's what I see coming for you magical you know that can also be this connection the spirituality of this connection strengthening oh my goodness pile one was short and then pile three was magic or no sorry <clears throat> pile two was so exciting for me that i think i short-circuited my phone or something like my energy was just so off the chart that my phone was not working do you guys ever get that in mercury retrograde where your phone just kind of like stops working anyway it was really weird and now here i am with you pile three and i can't stop talking <laughs> you're gonna have the longest pile <laughs> what does pile three need to hear how about what's coming next what big change let's see don't let pride get in your way so your person could be in their you know their ego right now or this is also a message for you that you know how i was talking about karmics and about how we have a hard time trusting them there is something about letting your pride get in the way when this person comes back in or when this person tries to show you that they're trying um one thing that i've noticed is that sometimes when they come back around they start off very slow, like very slow changes, almost like you can't even see the effort they're putting in. And so you really have to look for that effort. You really have to step out of your ego, step out of your pride and try and see that they are trying. They're trying to change and change takes time. Um, oftentimes when my, I'm gonna flip this. Oftentimes when my person would come back in, I was expecting perfection right off the get-go and if I didn't have it queen of swords and I was you know I was going about it the wrong way I was not I was not accepting I was not unconditionally loving I was judging and I had my expectations way too high anyway I'm gonna stop rambling with that I let my pride get in my way for a very long time is my point feels better to just put that pride down look at the bigger picture so yeah there's something here that spirit's saying look at the bigger picture of this um it could have to do with forgiving this person or trusting this person um it could be that you know this could also be a message for those of you who resonated with the high priestess 
Um, and that, you know, sometimes you think, oh, maybe I could be a tarot reader. Look at the bigger picture. Look at this journey. Um, especially if you're on a journey with a counterpart and how it's in your life for a reason. And for me, it was meant not only to teach me how to love myself, but to put me on my true calling. <clears throat> Surrender to the divine. <laughs> Thank you, spirit. I love that. <laughs> I love it. All right, let's see what else you need to know about what's coming next. Or what do you need to know about the changes coming next in this connection? No? Don't want to come out? Enlightenment. Oh, beautiful. Let's get one more. <laughs> I've never had this card before. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I don't think I've ever seen this card before. I think maybe once on the back of the deck. Oh my gosh. And it came out with love. And look, this is so like soul bond, two of cups, lovers energy. Ooh, they're in the waves and they're playing and they're happy. <laughs> this person does make you happy. Even if they hurt you, I know that they make you happy. They make your soul happy. They could make you happy in a way that you just can't describe. Like when somebody says, well, what's so special about that person? You're just like, uh, well, I don't know. They pushed me away. <laughs> they wouldn't commit to me. <laughs> we had fights. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I hear you. I mean, I feel you. <laughs> it's this unexplainable connection, this unexplainable love. And that's that's the whole soul tie thing. You're meant to love each other through thick and thin, through up and down. Mm, flipper could be relevant. Dolphins are so, I love dolphins. And I loved the movie Flipper with Elijah Wood. I sure did. <laughs> it makes me ridiculously happy. <laughs> so yeah, we have, was there another card? Oh, enlightenment, right? <laughs> So this does show some kind of spiritual enlightenment. And that's what I was talking about. You are both healing, you're both progressing. And, you know, I do feel like as this person goes through their judgment day, you also, um, you come into enlightenment. Um, it could be when this person contacts you or, you know, I just feel you both, especially you, really leveling up from this connection, really, high priestess, you know, I feel like you have a journey as a high priestess. That's what I'm getting. I got that for another pile too. All right, let's see what comes out of this deck. So spirit, what does pile three need to hear about this connection and what's coming next? We have 43 man holding a coin. So this is, you know, this is someone leveling up. This is 43 reduces to seven. So chariot energy, you do have somebody coming leveled up towards you. And you know, look at that. How symbolic is that? It looks just like that page, except this is more like the King of Pentacles. Um, so this is someone who has done, has made an effort. They could have, you know, maybe when they were experiencing financial hardship, they kind of leveled up got their finances in order before they could come back in. Uh, this is somebody coming towards you with an offer, someone that's been guided towards you. We see that light guiding this person. Um, this is someone that respects you. We see the purple flowers behind this person that symbolizes that this person does have a lot of love and respect for you. And they do, you know, they wanna show you that they've changed. Okay, that one was really, this one came out in reverse. So, you know how I was picking up the de the deceit? Look, seven again, chariot energy. Um, this person could have deceived you in the past. It wanted to come out in reverse. Remember when I was talking about the magician, how maybe you think this person manipulated you? Or maybe this person did deceive you, but they're coming in, you know, they've leveled up here. They don't, this is past energy, this deceit. And I feel like 
you know, this tar this card in reverse talks about the person who deceived you getting their justice or their karma. Getting it's you that gets your, your justice. They get their karma dealt to them. And that's, you know, probably what caused this person to awaken as they have been. I can't believe how long this is um, compared to pile one. <laughs> I'm sorry, pile one. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Spirit, what advice do you have for pile three about this connection? What advice do you have healing? Mm -hmm. Listen, I was saying you may be a light worker. I'm reading you that card. Freedom, 13. Look, we've had this come out before you guys about how you know, I've talked about this card, about how I truly see these as the two of you. And you couldn't, until you learn these lessons and evolve spiritually, you can't come together. And 13 is death and rebirth. And we see this beautiful Pegasus here ready to take flight because this bird is finally taking flight. And I believe that's very symbolic of you and your person. I feel like your person's going to swoop in. And you're going to be like, all right, let's go. <laughs> let's ride. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I don't say things like that. <laughs> Bear spirit healing number four. So let me read that to you because I do feel like some of you are meant to be healers. And that's, I feel like you helped heal this person. Even if you weren't together, there's something about your light that helped heal them. Um, this card will appear to let you know that healing on all levels is occurring, and it can come in many forms. Be ready to accept it. Know as well that you are a healing force for others. You may not even be aware that you are a conduit for healing energy, but when others thank you, simply say you're welcome, even if you don't know how it happened. In many native traditions, bear spirit is thought to be aligned with humans, as he can walk upright like a human. He represents the healer and good medicine, he also bestows healing powers to those worthy. You are indeed worthy. Bear spirit can also represent grounding, strength, and confidence. It activates a stable foundation to face whatever challenges appear in your life. The spirit of the bear says you are a healer and a channel for the life force of the universe. You are strong and grounded. Healing is unfolding and a situation is being resolved. Have faith that all will be well. Told you, you're magical. <laughs> oh, I remember what I was going to do. I was going to get you one of these animal cards. Um, for each pile, I kind of wanted to get an animal card to see what energy you will be embodying or are embodying in the near future. So let's see what energy will pile three be embodying in the near future. We have the, oh look, we have the turtle and the horse. I'm gonna take them both. All right, so this is very beautiful energy because this is very enlightened, like that enlightenment card. Um, you know, this is a very determined energy. Of, I'm not gonna give up energy. So I do feel like even though this person was very slow to come towards you, um, that you, you know, you're still, like I said, with that Pegasus, you're like, let's go, let's go. I'm ready. I've been ready. I've been here <laughs> waiting on you. <laughs> Not really waiting, but you know what I mean? So horse freedom. Oh, that's interesting because that's what that Pegasus card said. That's interesting. So this is earth energy, momentum, freedom, expansive energy and force achieves anything never gives up the horse represents the most masterful form of earth energy in the deck it provides us with momentum so reliable so supportive that you can ride on its back toward any goal no matter how difficult the terrain a horse personality is fully awakened fully alive and cannot be defeated i have chills the horse's freedom becomes available to us when we hone and collect our energy through daily practice Physical stamina and mental focus are the secret weapons behind the horse's legacy. When in balance, the horse can achieve anything, never gives up. When out of balance, runs away and feels weak. I feel you, horsey. I feel you. <laughs> and we have the turtle. So like I said, it could be that your person is the turtle. 
I just went right past the <gasps> turtle. <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> Sorry. Ancient soul grounded, trusting at home and self. No, this is you. This is both you. We see you enlightened. We see you in your power. We see you grounded. We see you. Oh, it's just beautiful. It's wonderful to be in the presence of a turtle personality. Like the beaver, the turtle has a strong relationship with the earth and water elements simultaneously. This helps to ground and connect them with to the dreep, dreeper. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I swear, I am, I am not drunk. I have been sober for a very long time. <laughs> I just get so excited that my words just blend together. Um, this helps to ground and connect them to the deeper truths of life, no matter where their travels lead them. Turtle energy is behind all great writers and storytellers. You could want to be a writer. You can be a light worker by being a writer. As they collect life experiences under their shells for later use, the most potent turtle energy helps us close all the other books and begin to tell our own true tale. Oh. When in balance, peaceful, adventurous, productive. When out of balance, slows down to a halt. <laughs> hey, I can respect that, Mr. Turtle. So pile three, that is your reading. Yours is super long and I feel kind of guilty about that. But anyway, <laughs> um, I will be back on Tuesday with another pick a card reading and I'm, I'm going to be catching up on all my personals in the next couple days. So if you're waiting for that, you'll hear from me. And thank you again for all the love and support. Sending you and your person lots of love. Bye.